welcome to this. Uh, corona has struck the nation and the world. It's now a global pandemic. And um, while I go to work every single day because I'm now an essential worker instead of just a minimum wage employee and an entry level job, I've been reading a lot. <laughs> because I wake up at midnight, I go to bed at four in the afternoon, and so watching screens is becoming difficult, so I've been reading. Also, at the beginning of this year, I set a resolution for myself to read more books. I should have set a resolution to do more exercise because wow, I'm winded. One of the books that I planned to read was Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I just finished it this morning and it was fantastic. On another note, I got a novelogue. Can you can you read that? <laughs> A novelogue today. I, I wasn't planning on getting it today. It just so happened that I got it on the same day that I bought, that I finished my book, and that the book is on the novelogue. So it's a great way of me introducing this, which is something that I want to do, which is read all of the 100 books on this poster, scratch them off one by one until there's no more, because sometimes you need book recommendations. Doesn't mean I'm not going to read all of the other books on the bookshelf, because I will, because some of these books are going to be difficult for me, like The Road. After I read The Road, I'm gonna need something happy. Maybe I'll read Harry Potter later. I don't know. But anyway, I will show you the poster now. It's not actually in here. This, this, this is empty. And this isn't sponsored because who'd sponsor this? But uh, YouTube requires me to say this now, even though I don't monetize any of my videos because I can't, because nobody watches these. Moving on, I'm gonna show you the poster and then I'm going to get about reviewing this because what I wanna do is read all of those books and then review them here, because why not? That's a it's a hundred ready-made videos, essentially. All I have to do is read. How hard can it be? So I literally just got the poster, which means it still does that lovely thing. So I'm, I'm laying it out upside down and uh, I'm weighing it down. Anyway, there are a hundred books on here and never let me go. Is this one? And I'm going to review it for you. But this is the poster. I think the next book I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go this way, like you would read a book. Ooh, novel idea. I got two in there, woo! And just go this way and then read one of these and then a book on my shelf and then one of these and then a book on my shelf. We're just gonna, it's gonna be fun, right? I've also read, I went through this list, I've read probably 95 out of the 100 on this list and I'm just gonna read them again because some of them, like The Phantom Tollbooth and um, what was the other one? Oliver Twist, A Wrinkle in Time. I was, I read, <laughs> those were read to me. I listened to an audiobook or we did them in school when I was in first and second grade. So my interpretations and understandings of the books will have changed between when I first read them and when I'm reading them again. So let's get started. Reviewing Never Let Me Go. This was a really good book. It was difficult for me to get through because I didn't quite understand what I was reading as I was reading it. So it's definitely a book that I'm going to have to reread, but it's a little bit disturbing. So, spoiler alert, it's about clones. Their sole purpose in life is to donate vital organs to keep the humans alive. So if a human has cancer, then a donor will, that's what they call the, the clones, will make a donation of one of their vital organs, whatever is needed, and then continue with their lives. The problem is, they're, throughout the entire book, you see it through the eyes of one of the clones and you learn the things that she learns as the same time that she learns them. So they're raised without knowing what they are. Uh, they slowly find out what they are and what their purpose is, but they don't have a full understanding. It also brings up the point that they were raised from babies all the way to probably their 20s or 30s before they complete or die. And so they're human beings and you're essentially just harvesting Harvesting human beings, but the reason that it's okay is that they're test tube human beings as opposed to like naturally conceived human beings. They go from being at Hailsham, which is like a place for them, like a school for them, where they learn all of these art, like um, art forms like painting, sculpting, drawing, poetry, writing, all of these things. They're learning these things and then they're shipped off to like a sort of halfway home before they become carers. They become carers and then when they get noticed, they become donators. And then once they've done about four donations, they have then completed. So you don't really understand everything that's going on because the narrator doesn't understand. And then it talks about why they were made to do art because, and it's because the the founder of Hailsham, the home that they were living in, wanted to 
prove that they were real people with souls and emotions and should be treated as such, whereas the rest of the community, the rest of society, didn't want to see them that way. There's, uh, there's references to how others are being treated, other clones are being treated that aren't from Hailsham, but they don't go into detail. It's just that it's really freaking bad. Anyway, it's hard-hitting, it's kind of disturbing, and you don't fully understand everything that's happening, or at least I didn't, until you've got to the end, which is what makes it such a good book, is because you want to figure out what's happening before it ends. And I think it was really, really good. So it's one of those ones where I'm going to have to read it again now that I know what's happening to see if I can pick up on some other things. I couldn't recommend this more highly. It's one of the better books that I've read. I really wish that this was something we read in school because I want to go more in depth and I want to hear other people's thoughts on this that aren't mine or my father's because we tend to have the same thoughts sort of on certain things. I think it's interesting how he was more disturbed by the book than I was and I think it's because I've become so accustomed to the idea of testing on animals because I'm looking into doing psychology and a lot of how we figured out how the brain works deals with testing on animals and then observing in humans whereas this goes straight into we're testing on humans and we're using humans we bypass the animals and they're not even seen as full humans because they're test tube humans so that's where he finds it the most disturbing and I just looked at it as sort of well it's science so I think that's an interesting distinction to make between two different viewpoints but if you've read this book or if you want to read this book I've just spoiled the entire thing for you but if you've read this book let me know your thoughts either text me because most of the people watching this probably probably know me or let me know in the comments down below how you felt about this book and whether you liked it or not and if you have any other suggestions for books like this because I really very much enjoyed this book that's it and I think the next book that I'm going to read is sharp objects by Gillian Flynn it's not on the poster but it is the next book that I have queued up to read so we're gonna do that one if you want me to review that one even though it's not on the poster let me know and I will do so I have two other books that I've read uh, so far Wait, no, that's a lie. So I've read seven books this year so far. If you'd like me to go over any of the other six books that I've read and review those, let me know. If you want me to review Gillian Flynn, I guess Sharp Objects is actually the title of the book, let me know. I'm also reading Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. And then I'm going to continue with that poster list and the things on my shelf. Just let me know what you want to hear about. And I will see you guys when I see you because the country's in flames. Goodbye. That was a kiss, I guess.